Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Yeah, I know, I know. I recovered from the Child's Play 2019 reboot. Um, there are other people who like the film, but for some people, like yours truly, we all hated it. But hey, you know, everybody has their own choice. And then I had to do a controversial podcast with my friend Quinn and Robbie. Well, it's a phone-in conversation with Quinn. But for the rest of the video, it's just Quinn and Robbie, you know, talking about him and, and dealing with something else, but whatever. Hey, I know they don't like the guy, or actually they do like him, but they just, they just like to go around making fun of him. So that's fine by me. I mean, it's their choice, but to me, I'm just going to stick to what I'm sticking to. But hey, you know, I don't want to be part of, you know, the whole uh, bill in this way. I just don't want to be part of this. This whole, oh great, I'm going to be the bad guy for this. Because I'm not a bad guy, you know. I'm a good guy, you know, trying to have respect with everyone. Well, anyway, I just picked this up. It's the last release um, from Disney Movie Rewards, which is simply now known as Disney Movie Insiders. Yeah, they're, they're actually given a new look. A new change, but I'm pretty certain that you'll be able to still use all these Disney Movie Rewards codes if you end up buying all these Blu-rays and DVDs. So, uh, one of them I just picked up is Disney's The Incredible Journey from 1963. It's based on the 1961 novel by Sheila Burnford. It's a story about three pets, all male breed. Yeah, one is um, a Labrador Retriever named Luau. Um, the other is a bull terrier named Bulger, and a Siamese cat named Tao. So together, they're about to embark on the Canadian wilderness just to find the Hunter family that actually raised uh, these three pets. And this is a film that would later uh, adapt a 1993 contemporarily remake called Homeward Bound The Incredible Journey, which we had uh, Michael J. Fox along with Sally Field and Don Amici providing the voice of the three pets, which are, which even though it's the same story, but they added uh, a subplot and added a lot of changes uh, in between, plus the location. And even the ages and and the sex breeds. So this time we have a golden retriever named Shadow, an American bulldog named Chance, and a Himalayan cat named Sassy. Yeah. Plus um, they had a new step family to join in, and and they're about to move to another place because. Their new father just had a new job, so it's in San Francisco. So they had to hire uh, her friend to. So they had to hire uh, mother's friend to take care of the pets. But they feel like you know they're going to be lost. But they they want to embark on the journey because you know they miss their home and they miss their their family and everything. So they take the risk to actually go on the wilderness, you know, having to deal with all these wild animals around, like a bear, um, a uh, a lynx, which is another cat, or having to deal with hunters, so on and so forth. You know. Not to mention the river, with all these rapids happening. Yeah, that sort of thing. Um. But, and of course, Homeward Bound The Incredible Journey did have a sequel, which is called Lost in San Francisco, which all three of them eventually got lost, and they wound up meeting all these other uh, stray animals. And, of course, Chance actually has a love interest named uh, Delilah, who was voiced by uh, not other than Carlo Gugino. Which was a decent sequel. I mean, I did enjoy that one. It's not as good as uh, the f 
the original re it's not as good as the original remake but still I, I enjoyed it and I do have it on DVD which is a double feature set I mean I'll probably take it out someday um, maybe if I get a chance I would love to watch them again and start doing reviews on those two films but I want to review this one because uh, seeing that I just picked this up and and um, I do enjoy this as well I mean yes there, there are some issues but that's okay I still think the film really works on its own level I know I'm pretty certain these animals were well trained when they did these scenes even if they had to take the risk in fact, um, the Siamese cat, uh, which is actually known as Sin Cat, actually appeared in another movie. It was called That Darn Cat, the, uh, the original film from 1965, which would later have a remake too, with Christina Ricci. Yeah, which I also enjoy. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, but for a film like this, it's, it's really enjoyable. Right here. There's no features. It is in widescreen, and so it looks um, surprisingly good for a DVD. They never released this on Blu-ray, which is a shame. But I guess that's the only way we get to see the film. But it does look uh, amazing, nevertheless, for the transfer. Yeah, no features, of course. Uh, not even a trailer. Then again. Matter was uh, Homeward Bound movies either, but whatever. Except for the, although I think one of them had the trailer, but whatever. Okay, well let's get to the review. It stars uh, Amelie Janess, John Draney, those names, Sandra Scott, Marianne the Finlayson, Ronald Cuhun, Tommy Tweet. Robbie Christie, Beth Lucky B, Bud Amos, Eric Claven Ream, Jam Roops, uh, who we later went on to do the film D2 The Mighty Ducks, uh, joining in with Muffy, Rink, and Syncat, yeah, the Bill Terrier, Labrador Retriever, and the Siamese Cat. It's written by James Olgar, who's also the producer. Yes, based on the novel by Sheila Burnford, once again, and it's directed by Fletcher Markle. The movie begins when we meet the Hunter family, joining them with Professor James, who's the father, along with the mother, Nancy, and their two children, Elizabeth and Peter. They just receive a telegram for James that he's been offering to visit a fellowship at... Oxford University in England, but both Peter and Elizabeth are worried about what has to be done with the two dogs and a cat. Like, they won't be able to see them for a while. And they were afraid, so they have to hire uh, John Longridge, you know, their, their best friend for the family, to actually take care of them. And by the way, the pets are Luoff, the young Labrador Retriever, Bulger, the English Bull Terrier, who's older, and their Siamese cat, Tao. So anyway, John has to stay with the animals uh, at his house in northwestern Ontario, in Canada, until a few days later, John had to leave for an opening day of duck hunting, so he was hoping that his housekeeper, Mrs. Oaks, along with her husband, Bert, to look after and take care of the animals while he's gone. But soon after John leaves, that's when all three of the animals were incredibly lonely and decided to, to embark on the incredible journey straight into the Canadian wilderness so that way they can go back to their homes of the hunters which that's the biggest start of them all when Lou F actually hears the call of wild geese so uh, overheard so they try to soon follow after but later on 
uh, Mrs. Oaks had arrived at John's house to expect to see where the animals are, joining in with Bert. But then they found the note, which uh, John actually had wrote uh, two notes that he held onto where the fireplace is at. But of course, Tao actually jumped onto it, and and then the last note uh, fell into the fireplace and burned. So now it's making it think that that John actually did took the animals with him, and that's what they fought. Um, but of course, that's what's going to lead to later on. Anyway, while they're on their way at home, the animals had to stop by the river just to have a drink of water. But they had to hide from a passing truck in case they are being recognized, which at this rate we started to spot a dog. But by the next morning, um, Bolger had started to feel very tired, beginning to slow down while they're walking on the, the train tracks. Yes, um, had a huge bridge on the side. So they had to stop for a rest in the clearing, waiting for Bolger to regain his strength. You know, they started getting some food in order for them to survive. Which that's where Tao decides to go off and start to hunt a quail while Bolger decided to rest until soon after he spotted two bear cubs they're just going around you know playing around as he gets to know um, Bolger and soon um, they started to befriend themselves for a while you know you know just having love but then both of the cubs were just roughly playing with each other, you know, like acting like they're fighting, until the mother bear shows up, and he claims that it was Bogart who was about to attack them. So then, she had to attack him, and that's when Tao came to the rescue to stop her, until the bear went away. So. Because uh, the mother was very frightened. Yeah, e even Luev joins in too to fight off against her. So once uh, the bear suddenly uh, went back, uh, they continued to go on their journey. After a whole week of traveling, you know, they had to travel like several miles to get there, even after dark. But then the uh, Bulgar suddenly. Uh, found an old bone straight into the uh, the cookhouse rubbish bin. Yeah, it's the trash can. That's where we spot a, an old hunter who actually has a gun and he's ready to shoot him just when he's about to steal the bone. I mean, luckily he didn't get hurt. It could have been a lot worse. Then after 10 days, uh, while he rests, um, while Bulger rests along with joining in with the pets, begins to hear a singing of a hermit named Jeremy. Joins in with his crow that's on top of his hat, or at this rate, his shoulder. <laughs> um, the hermit decided to take the animals to his house. Um, he was about to make some beef stew, not only for himself, but also for um, his crow and the free animals. Well, uh, Lou F actually took out uh, a dead rabbit and hoping he'll save it for later, you know, like if if he's not going to offer them food. Yeah, apparently, they didn't even eat at all. So, after that, they left. They took the food and well, they decided to eat it themselves anyway. Many miles um, to go along. They wound up going straight to the river. They started to uh, come across, but of course uh, the problem is um, Tao is a cat, and cats are afraid of water. So, he, so Tao was trying to find a way to actually go past the river so that way they can go straight into the um, the side of the uh, the logs around, see if he can make it. But. All of a sudden, it, the log broke off, 
and once up through a rapids of the river, and Li Tao got lost. Luev and Bulger were about to save him from the rapids, but it was too late because suddenly Tao was nowhere to be seen. That is until Tao was being found by a little girl you know, near the river. It's already soaking wet, and the young girl's name is Hyvie, joining in with uh, her family to take care of Tao since they found him. Just they go around feeding him and be able to take care of him very well and even sleep with him until it was ready for him to say goodbye to the family and the girl. Decided to leave on his own to see where Luev and Bulger are. And he went to the, the same area where where, uh, where he got lost near the rapid rivers and so but to make matters worse he was being chased down by a lynx yes a very tall big hungry lynx who was chasing him around and Tao had to hide into that log so that way the lynx won't catch him and then that's where we spot yeah, the little boy was a hunter and he starts to to go after the lynx so then Tao finally got out of the log and then later on Luev and Bulger actually hear Tao calling and then they recognize them and now they suddenly now they're suddenly together again and started to leave as soon as possible so they could finally continue on their journey. But that's when Luev suddenly spots a porcupine when he was just trying to be friends with the porcupine or just you know playing around with it. He got all these quills uh, all the way through his face. So after that uh, they meet a, another hunter, but it's a uh, but it's a hunter that's actually a very nice one, named James McKenzie, who actually um, found out about uh, Luef and all these quills that's uh, on his face. So he decided to give uh, medical treatment, you know, joining in with uh, his wife, so that way they can send Bulger in outside so that way you know he doesn't go crazy um, of course Tao will join in too so once they took out all these quills out um, he was all well so they had to stay you know with uh, Luef and, and Tao together until they finally make it back home all this time even though yes the family had been heard that they'd been lost. I mean, they they thought that uh, John was was with them the whole time, but they weren't. So that's why they had to make contact with everyone, all the authorities, to see where they're headed. And I know everyone was feeling disappointed too, including the Hunter family. Yeah, joining in with um, with both um, you know, Peter and Elizabeth. Because Peter actually had a birthday coming up. So once they had a, a birthday party, um, Peter was feeling very disappointed because the animals are not there. So they were hoping that his gift was to actually, uh, well, just sign up for uh, a registration paper for the Kenmore Kennel. So that way they'll be able to find another Bull Terrier puppy in his name. But then the animals had finally came, and everything was going great. So now they're all safe and, and sound, and, and now they're together again for the better. Yeah, so, yeah, I did have to explain as much as I could for, for this movie. 
But I definitely think it's an incredible film, no matter what. I really enjoy it. Um, they, you can pretty much tell they took the risk to actually do this. I know it's not easy when having to make a film like this, but but I'm pretty certain they're well trained. You know they, and I know they survive no matter what they do or had suffered or whatever. But I can see why you know it's it's hard for everyone to see um, animals getting into bigger dangers and and perils around. Um. Yeah, I have to say the human characters uh, could have been written better, per se. I, I understand that. I mean, especially the hermit, though, because I did have some a little bit of some trouble with the hermit, though. Like, for example, why why couldn't the hermit just just lay the uh, the plates down for the animals so that way they could eat all the the beef stew that they can have? I mean, that's what I don't understand. Why put it on the table? I mean, are they just going to go up on the chair and they'll start uh, eating it as soon as possible? I mean, that's what I don't get. So now he goes around eating it anyway because since they're not going to eat it, might as well just eat it for himself. <laughs> so, I think that was pretty unfair. But I understand. I mean, if they're not hungry, they're not hungry. Because <sighs> they already have their food of their own. So that's why they're saving it. Um, I'm pretty certain that they might have had um, the guts to actually uh, shot a scene where Watao had to wind up um, in, into the rapping rapids of the river. I mean, I'm hoping that sh I'm hoping he didn't get killed, which I know he didn't. Maybe they might have used uh, I don't know if they used a puppet or anything like that, but if they did, then then that's a uh, an interesting discovery that yes, um, they would have used a stunt uh, animal, or probably a dummy, to in order for the the cat to survive and you know, not getting harmed from all the dangers that's happening. Um, and I'm pretty certain that when they got attacked by the bear, because um, I know it's nature of being, um, they might have got hurt for a while, but I'm pretty certain they were all right. I'm hoping they are. Um, also to note though that this movie is a um, it does have a nature feel of it. I love the landscape the the look of the wilderness because uh, it's all shot in Canada I mean they, they shot it in somewhere in, in in Ontario through all these other as well as Washington joining in and I think some of the scenes were actually shot in Oregon as well so not so most of it is either Canada and Washington and Oregon. Because yes, if you had to live in the Northwest, um, there's a bit of a uh, bit of that too. Uh, so you probably see what you recognized. And of course, you got a narrator, um, Rex Allen, a lifetime uh, actor. He's also a singer too. Uh, been known for singing the the Arizona Cowboy, but he did a an amazing job narrating the story because it does feel more like a nature movie than than the whole entire actual uh, animals who who had their own speaking voices and stuff, and they and they had to continue to go on before something bad happens. Yeah. Um, but anyway, and the movie's only 80 minutes, so it's it's a fast-paced film, um, but I got to say the animals to me were the best things about the movie anyway. I mean, it, it is a movie of, about the free pets and the fact that they had to take the risk to survive through like several miles to get through home. Yeah. Um, and maybe there could have been more of the uh, climactic ending. I think it could have helped better a little bit, but I understand. I mean, they, it's the quickest that they had to go for through the novel. I mean, they're trying to stay true to the novel anyway, so I, I figured that's what they were trying to add. Nice cinematography by Kenneth Peach. You can definitely tell once you saw it on screen. 
nice music by Oliver Wallace. Um, has a great, wonderful score. But, uh, like I said, I it's the kind of mood that you will you would hope for. It's a it's a feel good film, and it's um, the risk they had to take. And I love all three of the animals. They really work. I love. I love Towel though. I mean, he was the smart one, very curious one too. I mean, he's goes around, you know, saving the dogs from the bear, and he's the one who takes the writ. It was always uh, going into trouble too, but the rest are just. Uh, I, mean, I know Boger is, you know, a very tired um, older dog. I mean. No matter what he does, I mean, he's, I mean, he can be curious too, but then at times he can, he's just an old man who's just trying his best to, to get there. Uh, Lou F, um, is a smart one, but he's very young, and he does care for everyone else too, so, hey, that's, that's cool. <laughs> Okay, but for animal lovers out there, I mean, even with all these uh, risky uh, Perel scenes, I'm pretty certain you're going to enjoy this film, I mean, no matter what, because it's a movie that's that's fun for your whole family. Um, it's a great movie, so I really enjoy it, uh, based on a uh, very great novel. So that's The Incredible Journey, and I give the film four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.